It's time for light that darkness can't defeat. It's time to escape from the shadow of death and into abundant life. For the people living in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Welcome to the Great Lights Program with David Oyedipo Jr. Get set to arise and shine because your light has come. Understanding the power of his resurrection. Understanding the power of his resurrection. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. It said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We must come to understand that according to scriptures, every believer is expected or ordained to experience the power of his resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 22, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made by that power of resurrection alive. All died in Adam. But all are made alive by the power of resurrection. How many are made alive? So every believer is ordained to experience the power of his resurrection. And I believe that by the encounter that we are having here today in God's presence, this Easter Resurrection Sunday service, you are going back with an experience of the power of his resurrection in the name of Jesus. I said you are going back with an experience of the power of his resurrection in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 27 verse 50 down to verse 53. Matthew 27 50 to 53. The Bible says there. It says that Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice. He yielded up the ghost. He said and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain. From the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. He said, and the graves were open. I see somebody's grave being opened today in the name of Jesus. He said, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. And verse 53, it says, and they came out of the grave. Somebody is coming out of the grave. I said, somebody is coming out of the grave. He said, and went into the holy city and they appeared to many. Whatever has kept anyone locked out of appearance, making you to be covered, your glory to be, dis, to be, to be diminished, diminished. By this encounter today, as you are stepping out of your grave, you are appearing in glory. I said you are appearing in glory. Whatever it is that has put anyone in any grave, just like Jesus could not be held by the grave, the Bible said it was impossible that the pains of death should hold him. Just the same way he could not be held. It could not be closed. They sealed the grave with a stone. But the stone was rolled away. And he that was dead came back alive. And behold, he ever liveth. Therefore, the same way, whatever may have sealed anyone in any grave, any situation that has put you under cover, by this encounter today, not only is the grave open, but you are coming out of the grave in the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. And the grave represents any state of hopelessness. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, during the, uh, uh, the prophecy of the dry bones, the Bible tells us there, verse 1 down to verse 14, the bones were dry. And it says, Son of man, prophesy. And as I prophesy, bone came to bone. Sinews came, flesh came, and then skin covered the flesh. It said, prophesy to the wind. I said, and I prophesied, and the wind breathed upon the people, and they rose up as a mighty army. And the result of that, he said, these are the children of Israel. They said, we are cut off for all of our parts. Our bones are dried. And we have been cut off for all our parts. And all of our hope is lost. He said, therefore, verse 12, he said, son of man, prophesy to them. 
let them know that I will cause them to come out of their grave. That means I will cause them to come out of their hopelessness. I will cause them to come out of their ravaging situations. No matter what your situation is today, the same way Jesus came out is the way you are coming out this morning. I said the same way Jesus came out when everybody had written him off. They had concluded his case. The Pharisees were celebrating his defeat. But the Bible said, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because in his crucifixion was the secret to his resurrection. There are those that may have crucified you, castigated you, put you in the back bench. But I tell you that the same way Jesus Christ of Nazareth arose out of a hopeless situation, you also are arising in the name of Jesus. Very quickly this, this afternoon, the question is, what does this power of resurrection do? What is its effect? What does, this, what does it bring to you and me? Number one, it raises us from defeat to victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, down to verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57. All death, where is thy sting? And all grave, where is thy victory? It says that the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But look at verse 57. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. The Bible said thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. He causes us always to triumph in Christ Jesus. So by resurrection, we have access to victory. No wonder the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 that whatsoever is born of God, and remember whatever is born of God is born of the Spirit, which means it's born of the force of resurrection. He said whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. It means that before the power of resurrection, you may have been subjected to defeat, but by the power of resurrection, you are elevated to the place of victory. That means concerning you, no more defeat. I said concerning you, no more defeat. In your career, no more defeat. In your family, no more defeat. In your business, no more defeat. Somebody shout, I'm victorious in Christ Jesus. Number two thing we, dis we discover is that the power of resurrection takes us from captivity to liberty. From captivity to liberty. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 25, we saw it earlier, verse 50 to 53. It said that when he cried up and yielded up the ghost, it says suddenly those that slept, the saints that slept, their bodies arose and they came out of their grave. The grave is a place that is sealed. Anytime you see a grave, you discover in our day and age particularly, a grave is covered by cement. Because whatever entered is never expected to come out. It is captive there. There are things and there are places that you may have been sealed. Nobody ever expects you to ever come out. Nobody expects you to ever emerge. They have buried it. They believe that that case is over. They said the situation is closed. It can never change. They said this, this man's case can never be overturned. But the Bible makes us to understand that the saints that slept and were buried in the closed grave, it said that day they came out. This resurrection day, no matter how deep down you may have been buried, I see you coming out in the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11 and verse 12. The Bible said, as for thee also, he said, and by the blood of the covenant, I have set forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. That pit is a grave. Every pit has water except the grave. He said, I have set thee forth out of the pit where there is no water. Turn to your stronghold. You prisoners, you have been imprisoned, but you are keeping hope alive. He said, even today, not tomorrow, but today do I declare that I will render double unto you. I have good news for somebody here. You may have been imprisoned in that grave, but God says today, not tomorrow. This day, the 27th of March, 2016, he said, I am restoring double unto you. If you are the one I'm talking about, shout a louder, amen. Number three is that resurrection marks our escape.
escape from filthiness into holiness the power of resurrection is what projects us from filthiness into holiness first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 42 the bible makes us to understand it says so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is sown in decadence it is sown in degradation but it is raised in incorruption it means that when it is dead there is corruption but when it is made alive by the power of resurrection it has escaped corruption that is why the bible says he said that thy, thou will not allow thy holy one the one who has been lifted up by the power of resurrection thou will not allow thy holy one to see corruption and no wonder the bible says in romans chapter 1 and verse 4 romans chapter 1 and verse 4 the bible tells us and he was declared to be the son of god with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead it means that when there is a resurrection from the dead there is an escape from corruption i don't know what filthiness may be hanging around any life the things that displease god the things that are warring in your members by this encounter this month, this afternoon i see you escaping that corruption in the name of jesus somebody believe it say it louder amen. amen number four it marks our escape from shame into glory our escape from shame into glory first corinthians 15 and verse 43 the bible makes us understand it is sown in dishonor but it is raised in glory it is sown in dishonor but it is raised in glory when there is death there is dishonor but when there is resurrection it is glory i don't know what your situation may be like they may have looked down at you they may have written you off they may have called you all kinds of names they may have insulted you but here is what the king of glory has said he said that it may have been sown in any kind of dishonor but as it is being raised on this resurrection sunday it is being raised in glory i see that becoming your experience in the name of jesus whatever therefore represents shame reproach disgrace by this encounter today it is turned around for a testimony next we see that it is also it marks our escape from weakness into power first corinthians 15 and verse 43 it is sown in weakness helplessness he said but it is raised in power it is sown in weakness it looks helpless no one seems to think anything can come out of it but it is raised in power i see god raising you in power in the name of jesus next we see that it is an escape from natural to the supernatural an escape from the natural to the to the supernatural in first corinthians 15 and verse 44 the bible said it is sown in natural body but it is raised a spiritual unhurtable undamageable on you know on unconfrontable body it is raised a spiritual body god's servant has told us he said there are highly there are demonized people there are highly demonized people there comes a point where a person is possessed by so many so many forces of darkness that he can he can do anything the bible tells us about the madman of gatherings he was loaded with a legion of demons the bible said when they tie him with chains he plucks it off you know what it means to pluck it's like to pluck a fruit he was tearing chain like it was mango pulling it off his ankles and then going into the into the into the the graveside and cutting his body with stones he was highly demonized and everybody was afraid of him but then there are also highly divinized people have you not heard the bible say that then you are filled with all the fullness of god that is god is now becoming the majority of the content of your body the bible tells us in the book of second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 it says there he said but we have this treasure in 18 vessels he said that the excellency of power may be of god and not of us there are people who carry human body but they contain divine power 
that is you they look like humans but inside them is the content that only comes from heaven they flow and then things begin to happen they move and demons begin to shift they move and then the, the forces of darkness begin to disappear why because they have seen a container of power you know that something is a bottle does not mean its content is water there are bottles that look like natural glass bottle but the content of it is acid it, the, the container does not determine the content are you hearing what i'm saying you may look like a human being now but god is saying that by the power of resurrection there is there is a personality inside of you there is a content inside of you that makes you a force to be reckoned with by the forces of hell as you are departing from here today the things that used to confront you they will begin to run from you i said the things that used to intimidate you they will begin to run from you we have said all of this to recognize that the force of resurrection is a is a power for every believer to get acquainted with in order to walk the, in the fullness of life that god has ordained that's why paul said that in the book of philippians 3 10 he said that i may know him and the power that i may know him and the power of his resurrection it is something to know in ephesians chapter 1 beginning from verse 17 he said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know he said the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance he said and the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power with he wrought when he raised jesus from the dead so that power must be known in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 down to verse 5 paul speaking concerning the same thing he said i determine not to know anything except jesus christ and him crucified and i was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling but as i determined to know him and the power of his resurrection my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but with the demonstration of the spirit and of power why in verse 5 he said that your faith should not rest in the cunningness or the wisdom of men but in the power of god those who determine to know will walk in power. Those who determine to know will walk in power. And what a great joy. You have come here to learn at the feet of Jesus, which means you have come here to know. And because you have come here to know, I see you walking in power in the name of Jesus. So we can see clearly that resurrection carries potency for every believer, but is captured by our access to revelation. It means that the deeper we dive in knowledge or the deeper we go in revelation, the higher we fly in power. Those who go deep in revelation go high in power. That's why he said there in that Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, all the way down to verse 21. After he said that, I may know that he told us that we should know the riches of inheritance and the, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us, what we who believe. In verse 21, he begins to tell us how that power projects you. He said, It puts you far above. You go deep in knowledge, you go far in power, far above all principality and power power and might and dominion and every name that is named if you look at that scripture you discover very lavish terms that are used he said put you above how many principality all principality and all power and all might and all dominion and every name so any name that is dominating you is a, is something that we are lacking in knowledge the higher you go in, the deeper you go in knowledge, the higher you fly in power. I see somebody here flying into new heights in power in the name of Jesus. I said, I see somebody here flying into new heights in power in the name of Jesus. If you are the one I'm talking about, say loud amen. But not only are we here today on this resurrection Sunday celebrating resurrection, but we're celebrating one of the packages of resurrection, which is restoration. Every one of us must recognize that one of the vital deliveries of the power of resurrection is the restoration of human dignity. The restoration of human dignity. Why restoration? 
John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. There is a need for rest restoration because there is a thief on the loose. And it is our duty to capture him and recover our portion. Not singularly, but minimum double fold. I see somebody taking hold of it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you may have lost before you entered into this service, at your departure, you are walking into double restoration. I said you are walking into double restoration. <laughs> One woman came before the king, like we have come before the king of glory here. And she began to report the doings. She said she came to cry before the king for her land and for the fruit of her and for her house. And the Bible said the king began to ask her, tell me about Elisha. And she began to share the testimonies. Just like many of us have been going around testifying about Jesus in town. Telling everybody about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, and at the end of the testifying, the king looked at her. He said, and he appointed unto her a certain officer and said unto him, restore unto this woman all that are hers from the time that she left the land until now and all the fruit of the land that was ever taken. For seven years she was out of the land. But as she went around testifying of the doings of God through Elijah, through Elisha, he said, the king appointed. I'm here to tell you that God is appointing some angels right now. They are officers of restoration. They are delivering to you your portion in God. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. But the question is, what are the keys to supernatural restoration? What are the keys to supernatural restoration? Let us begin by understanding that we must first recognize that restoration is God's will. In Joel chapter 2 verse 25 and 26 in particular, the Bible tells us there, it said, I will restore. I will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten. The wonderful thing about God is that what no man can restore, God can restore. Man can restore things, only God can restore years. I don't know what has happened in the years that have gone past, but God says that I will restore not only things, but even the years that have been eaten up. That means that somebody here is going to be accelerated to the point where you overtake where everybody expects you to be. But take note of the word, I will. I will. That means I desire to. That means I have determined to. That means I have prepared to. I will restore. So it is the will of God to bring about restoration. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17, the Bible also tells us there, it said, I will restore health unto thee. So restoration is God's will. And anytime we ask him anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we are assured that he will grant us the petition that we have asked of him. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. That means clearly according to scriptures that every time we come to God concerning restoration, since it is his will, it is our portion to receive. And what a joy, not only is it God's will, but today is also God's timing. This is called the covenant day of restoration. It means if it will not happen any other day, God has determined that it must happen for you today. I see somebody here being restored supernaturally in the name of Jesus. So, we must recognize that it is God's will to bring restoration to the redeemed. Also, we must recognize that the power of resurrection delivers our ultimate restoration. Very quickly now, how do we qualify for supernatural restoration. How do we qualify? We'll take a few things quickly here from God's word. Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3, he said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? 
it means that without salvation, you cannot escape from the, you know, oppression of the thief. It takes salvation to escape into restoration. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible tells us all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and verse 30, the Bible said, Who he did for know, he did also predestinate that he may conform them to the image of his son. He said, And whom he did predestinate, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. All sinned and they lost glory. But when they, God called them into salvation, he restored their glory. So salvation brings about restoration. Number two, we must return to the Lord in full repentance. In Job chapter 22, verse 23 and 24, Job 22, verse 23 and 24, he said, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. In other words, if you want to be restored, if you want to see everything that is lost brought back, he said, you must return to the Almighty. If you return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put iniquity far from thy tabernacle. He said, and thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. In other words, anything you know that is a stain, a strain between you and God, your relationship with God, you must put it away. You must turn and repent full scale in order to enjoy the full release of your portion with God. You must turn and be restored full scale. Like God's servant has told us, there is no such thing as grace that permits sin. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So we must recognize that we have a duty to turn if we are going to be restored. If you desire to be restored, you must decide to turn. Whatever you don't return from is keeping you from being restored. When you see where you have missed it, you turn to God in godly repentance. Lord, I'm sorry. I come before you and I repent of this error. And please hear this. Don't minimize error by calling it another name. Call it what it is. Whatever offends God is sin. Call it sin. When you call it sin, it will awaken you to righteousness. And say, now Lord, I repent from this sin. Shout hallelujah. We saw in the story of Job. Job was a man that was righteous. But Job's mouth was speaking constantly against God. He was making complaints continuously against God. For Job to be restored, he had to repent. We find that in Job chapter 42, verse 1 to 6. And at his repentance, we saw God bringing his restoration. As we turn from anything that strains our relationship with God, I see us walking into full restoration in the name of Jesus. Number three, we must seek for revelation of the word in areas of our challenge. If you are challenged in any area, Look for light from scriptures. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32, he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So God's word is the pathway to our portion with God. Settle down with his word. Seek after light and you can walk totally into your liberty. Seek after light and you can walk totally into your liberty. Seek after light and you can walk cheaply into your liberty. Remember John chapter 8 verse 32? You shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall make you free. So if you want to be restored, settle down with God's word. In that area, Lord restore me my career. You take God's word concerning that area of your career. Take God's word concerning that area of your marriage. Take God's word concerning that area of your business and settle down with it until you walk cheaply into your restoration. I see that becoming your experience in Jesus' name. I said, I see that becoming your experience in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number four, commit to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Commit to serving God. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3 down to verse 6, the Bible tells us there, verse 3 to 6, for a long season, 
Israel was, not with, was without God and then there was all kinds of vexation. No peace for him that came in or went out. He said, but there was vexation upon all the inhabitants of the, law, of the land. But the Bible tells us in verse 12 to 15, they made an oath to serve the Lord God of their fathers. And the Bible said, as a result of that, God gave them rest round about. They were supernaturally restored by a conscious decision to serve God. They were supernaturally restored by their conscious decision to serve God. As you take that decision, many of us have done that already, and as you stay with that decision, I see supernatural restoration becoming your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, you must settle down in the house of God. Settle down in the house of God. In the book of Psalm chapter 92, verse 13, down to verse 15. He said, those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the court of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. He said, they shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. They shall be fat and flourishing not they will be lean and diminishing if they are planted with god they cannot suffer losses every commitment to being planted is what brings about our flourishing we cannot afford as believers to be church visitors hopping from church to church from place to place we must learn to be planted and to stick with god that is the key to being fully restored i see you being fully restored in the name of jesus Number six, receive the prophets sent to you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 and verse 41. Verse 41 in particular, the Bible said, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive the prophet's reward. Think about it. In Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10, by a prophet, the Bible said, The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. When we look at scripture, we discovered only 70 people entered into Egypt with Jacob. But at their emergence, 3 million people came out. And at their coming out, they came out with enough resources to create a national economy on their first day. That is what I call restoration. They may have come in with wealth, the wealth that one man can handle. But by the time they came out, they came out with the wealth of a nation. That is what you call restoration. And when any individual aligns with the prophet sent to them, they enjoy supernatural restoration. They went with Moses and their restoration came forth. As you have settled down upon this mountain and God's servant, the prophet of God leads us further in, you know, by prophetic blessings, instructions, teachings, and we are following it. Watch it. You shall be walking into full-scale restoration in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Number seven, believe God for your supernatural restoration. Do what? Believe God for your supernatural restoration. Luke chapter 1 verse 45, he said, Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance. God only performs for believers. Those who believe him, those who believe him are the ones who engage him. As you anchor your faith on God today, I see God stepping in to bring about your full restoration in Jesus' name. And finally, number eight, engage in a cry of faith. 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 Psalm chapter 34 and verse 17 engage in a cry of faith he said the righteous cry and the lord hear it and deliver it them out of all their troubles no need crying to men cry to god in faith and god will step in to bring about your full restoration the good news is this today is your own day of restoration <laughs> lift up your right hand to heaven right now and appreciate God for the restoration package he has available for you.
Lord, I give you thanks. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone's knocking at the door Someone's knocking at the door Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Is at the door Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner, but I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I pray for you, Father. I thank you today for these precious ones you have drawn into your kingdom. Let the grace that has brought them keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for each one of them, we decree today that the barriers against their life and destiny be broken in the name of Jesus. Grace to walk with you all the days of their lives. Release it upon them. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say it loud, amen. If you have just received Christ as your Lord and Savior or were blessed through this broadcast, we would love to hear from you. For inquiries and testimonies, send an email to info at tglmedia.org. We also invite you to visit one of our Winners Chapel churches near you anywhere around the world. Until next time, keep walking in the great light.